Hi, welcome to Howie Mandel Does Stuff. I'm Howie Mandel. This is my podcast. This is Jacqueline Schultz. This is my daughter, by the way. Hi. Hi. Yeah. We've met before. We have met before on a, on a boat. And oh, that's right. Y- right. Adam. A catamaran. Adam Corolla is here, who's a good friend, funny man, uh, New York Times bestselling author. That's true. With a brand new book out. Uh, it's coming out, I think, uh, June or July 19th. I got to look. But it's But then I'll put this, can, I'll put this, I'll, this will be airing. I'll make this appropriate. You can pre order it. You can pre order it? Mm-hmm. Okay. And it's called Everything Reminds Me of Som- Something. Is that what yes. it's called? Mm-hmm. Everything Reminds Me of Something, which is, when you think about it, true. Well, <laughs> what is it based on? Well, the, the title sort of came from me and you're probably this way too where somebody says something and you go oh oh yeah oh no oh, yeah no and i want to talk about this and then i want to talk about that because everything reminds you of a story or something or a joke or an idea or whatever it is um i write comedy books basically that have a lot of social commentary in them and this and this one being no different being no different that is correct. So what is the premise in the, of this book? It, it really, this one actually has people asking me questions. Some celebrity guests, I think you're in there. Am I in the book? I, well, we for sure would I have I want to be in the book. Is it too to late? No, I, I wouldn't have said no to you. You I, wouldn't have said no. And we definitely reached out to you. And so you don't even know if I So I'm you're in the, in the book. I'm just going to say you're in the book. And you don't know you're in the book? I didn't. <laughs> well, I just say yes out. to everything You're probably Adam not asks. in the book. You don't think I'm No, in the book? I think he's just being nice. I don't think you're in the book. Well, this well, reminds me of something. Mm-hmm. No, I was I, always left out as a child, and you this even this conversation reminds me of my childhood. I can Everything guarantee apropos, you're in the book. You can guarantee I'm in the yes. book? You can still order through, it. Through process of deduction, which is I had a short list of celebrity friends that I reached out to for questions. And I know you're on that list. And just we'll get to, we'll talk to you uh, about your life and what you're doing a little bit more in a second. But I am fascinated by the book because I like the I like the title of the book. What is a question? Because that's if you've I've I've been lucky enough to be on your podcast and uh, watched you do stand up, and you are uh, for all intents and purposes one of the best ranters. Am I? Being, yes, I'm a good ranter. You are. You yes. rant. Do you know he rants? Right. Uh-huh. Yeah. I mean, I, I uh, a lot of people have an act. He doesn't even. He does have an act, but his act is ranting. You can give uh, Adam a subject, and then he just that you do that a lot on your podcast too. So was yeah. this the book of rants? Like people are asking you questions, and then you go off. And yeah, rant. people bring up example. a subject. You can bring up a subject right now. Yeah, whatever subject you want, and then I would have a bunch of thoughts about that subject. Now, sometimes they're a little more fertile soil than others, you know, and then other times it was kind of like, yeah, I don't have a ton of thoughts about that subject, although that's a rare occasion. Though you have an eclectic uh, taste in subjects. You know, he's a big uh, Paul Newman fan. He has a warehouse here um, in town where he collects. He has every salad dressing that Paul Newman has ever Is that true? No, I have thir- <laughs> I have 13 Paul Newman race cars. I'm not even a huge Paul Newman fan. I'm I know. just a Paul Newman race no, car I you. fan. <laughs> I know. Well, it's- I thought there was going to be a warehouse of salad dressings that you just collect. No, but you have to know that we are doing this podcast mm-hmm. in a warehouse. Mm-hmm. This is a warehouse and why do you think you you probably don't know this. Why do you think we have a warehouse? For salad dressings? No. What? <laughs> That's good. What? Because this man is the, uh, he put the seed in my mind of, uh, you know, he's the For first. For podcasts, you mean? No, warehouses. Oh, warehouses. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, well, you're also like the first to start podcasts, so that's what I thought. I Well, I bought my first warehouse right around 20 years ago. And it, it seems like a weird fit, comedian in warehouse. Because- warehouse seems like a you know if you're not Amazon, right? If you're not a uh, in in manufacturing, if you're, it right. seems like a where like if you said a hairdresser in a warehouse it doesn't even make sense. Right. Anybody in a warehouse. So when I heard Adam Carolla bought a warehouse, it doesn't even make sense, does it? 
Well, it makes sense now that you I have. But I'm just okay. No, back. no, this no. It doesn't make sense. Twenty years ago, okay. and I bought it and I used it a lot. Uh, later, I built my podcast studio in offices and. What did you use? There. What did you originally use the warehouse for? Like well, when you said, "I'm going to buy." You should know just to give you a little background. Um, Adam uh, started out before uh, comedy, before we all knew him. Uh, the first thing I knew you from was radio or the or man show. What's the first? Uh, probably radio. Yeah. So, but he was a you're a carpenter or a builder. Yes. yes. So he was in. That was my former profession. So when I heard you had bought a warehouse, because I had heard it before I talked to you, I thought, oh, he's getting back into building. He's probably storing lumber. And I kind of was. Oh, you were. Uh, well, I liked cars, so I knew I'd need a place to stash a car to, and then I actually built myself a wood shop in there. And that's what that was sort of my dream to have like a world class wood shop. I used to work in cabinet shops, they were in warehouses. So I just sort of built myself a wood shop and I used it for a long time. But what ended up happening, and you don't have this problem, which is, and I, I should put this caveat out to anyone listening who's thinking about purchasing a warehouse, which is if you were born in Canada, and you want to move to the San Fernando Valley and open a warehouse or buy a warehouse, that's right. fine. Don't buy a warehouse in your old neighborhood. I grew up in the San Fernando Valley. I bought my first warehouse in the San Fernando Valley, and all my dumb shit friends from high school wanted to know if they could park their RV in the parking lot or they were they were oh. refurbishing a pickup truck with their dad. They needed a place. They all lived in apartments. They all lived in small houses with a one-car garage. And so the second I bought my warehouse, it got filled with all of my friends' shit. You don't think that happens here? He so, has family wait. members who drop off couches. I yeah, my yeah, couches oh, are here. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. You've been here too long. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you are the self storage uh, business is basically. <laughs> well, you? I don't know if you, you call started? it. A bit, I don't call it a business because I don't get paid. Oh. But then people drop all their shit off, and then it would sit there like their old cars would sit, and you'd find yourself pushing them around to get them out of the way. And then at some point, if you suggested to them that maybe they should finish up their car and move it out, they would get angry. That's really, the, you'll learn a lot about human nature. If you have a warehouse, because have some, you lost friends because of this? Yes. Yes. Really? At some point they will get some old Bronco from 1969. They'll park it in the parking lot. It'll sit there collecting raccoons and leaves and dust. And at some point you'll go, I want to get this thing. Is there out anybody of here. we can call right now to patch up a friendship because of the warehouse issue? No. Well, when you said lost, I thought you meant died. Yes. No, oh. no. Everyone, we everyone's alive. All your friends. I don't died. have their phone numbers anymore. And I told them to uh, forget mine. Right. But my first warehouse just got filled with a bunch of people's junk from the neighborhood, essentially. Later on, I got another warehouse and I was able to kind of do he shit out. has four warehouses. Right. So I told how, well, no, I told everyone. Everyone I knew, I said, look, you have a job, you're making money in Hollywood, get a warehouse. And they said, <laughs> what do I need? Who said, a who, nobody was saying that in Hollywood. You're in Hollywood, you've made it, get a warehouse. Right. That and, has never been a Hollywood dream. And they all said, what do I need a warehouse for? And I said, believe me, you'll use it. You will use it. And then Howie, the only person I know who ever took me up on that advice, Got his first warehouse a few miles from here. No, it's right. It's here. It's a, the, the, you know, it go, you go oh, out the back door. The this is all I'm, I've got oh. the whole. It's they call it an, an, an I have a cul de sac. <laughs> it's perfect. called an industrial neighborhood. It's just me. Perfect. <laughs> perfect. I knew it was right around here, but you got that ten years ago or so. Yeah. Yes. Smart purchase, gone yes. up in value. Thank you. You listen to me and you. you use it. Thank you. I thank you. I and I thank you for listening to me. I, well, and I thank you for always being incredibly supportive. I, I, he is, um, and so that's the other part. He's an entrepreneur. You know, he's a builder. He works with his hands. He's an entrepreneur. He's a, um, he's got a, uh, what do you call it when you uh, you make uh, alcohol? What do you call that? With uh, Hillbillies make Bruce alcohol. business. Oh, uh, he'll, uh, that's moonshine. Moonshiner. He's a moonshiner. <laughs> right. Right. But you got me drunk one time in public. That's true. I went and did his podcast and he had his, uh, it's Mangria. Yes. Is Mangria doing well? 
Yes. I love Mangria. I got to say. You know, it loves you. That was one <laughs> of, I, you know, one of my favorite stories about you, but really it was a metaphor for life. And I, and I hope you don't mind me repeating it. The fact that I don't know what you're about to say, I don't mind yet. Yeah. But when it's finished, if I mind, I'll just edit it. You're mm -hmm. right. Yes. So uh, you got drunk on Mangria, I believe, because you and a friend and a couple were at the Wood Ranch barbecue yeah. joint. Right. right, in the valley. Here. And I was playing the club theater right next door, the honky tonk. Right. Yeah. What's that called? Saddle the Ken Ranch? No, no, Cattle Ranch. Canyon Saddle. Club. Canyon Club. Canyon Club. Was it Canyon Club or it Saddle Ranch? Well, anyway, Canyon Club. Sorry. Oh. And then I was up in the green room upstairs moments before the show was supposed to start, and Howie just came into the room, and I said, "Wow, what what are you doing here?" Because he was not slated to be on the show, mm -hmm. and he said, "I was at the barbecue place next door. I came out. I saw your name up on the marquee. Thought." Thought I'd come over and say hi. And we really, said, I just wanted free tickets. We said, uh, <laughs> awesome. Uh, if you want to come out on stage and, and say hi and hang out, that would be awesome. But here's the story. You had a lid of popcorn. This was uh, yeah. what I would call, it was like the size of a sh large shoebox lid or yeah. maybe just a kind of lid that a nice dress shirt would come in in a box. And it was in a filled, box. filled with popcorn. Yes. And how he came in, and he got it from the barbecue joint. No, I got it from the, the movie theater. I didn't want to see a movie, but I like movie theater popcorn. Oh. So I went in and I bought, uh, I got a, they had one of those boxes that you can put all the drinks in. I said, I don't even want it, the cup. I don't want the the thing. Just fill this box with popcorn. Oh. And I'll pay for it. I didn't want to see a movie. I wanted I, to see Adam. That's interesting because I thought because it was a barbecue joint, sometimes they just get, have the popcorn. No, or peanuts. Whatever. Peanuts. Peanuts. Sometimes, yes, peanuts most times, sometimes popcorn. I was doing a math. You said I came from the barbecue joint. And you had this popcorn, so I was right. like, "I oh, must have got it from the barbecue." It's joint. an eclectic night. I went to so, it. I went, got uh, popcorn without a movie. It's amazing I saw barbecue. that you guys remember. The, and he details. was he was eating it. <laughs> he <laughs> bored. I mean, it's just amazing that you remember his. Popcorn. Well, here's the story, okay. and here's why I remember it. Okay. He was walking and he was eating it, and then he offered it to all the guys in my crew who were sitting at the table waiting to go up on stage in the green room. He said, do you guys want to hit off the popcorn? And guys were reaching in and eating off the popcorn. No, yes, no. he did. Yes, he did. And I said, <gasps> Howie, why? whoa, you're such the germ guy. Right. Why are you okay with this? This doesn't seem like you'd be okay with it because you're the germ guy. Doesn't make sense. Doesn't seem right. And you said, you don't get it. I'm nuts. And that's yeah, yeah. right. I went, oh, okay. Yeah, it doesn't have to make sense. No. Well, it, it, here's the thing. So my uh, OCD or that issue is kind of uh, it's it's up and down. Mm -hmm. I would imagine I probably had a drink at the uh -huh. barbecue place, and I was a little loosey goosey. Mm -hmm. I also showed up at your place, you know, and I probably have had enough popcorn because I ordered like a, a pound of popcorn from a theater that I wasn't going to attend. That and then I got into move, your man. place for free, and I'm standing there with a box of popcorn, and you have a bunch of... Um, I didn't see a spread uh, that you had put out for your guests. No, I didn't. <laughs> no, nothing. <laughs> well, nothing. we didn't this have guests. <laughs> we were just going to do the show. But there yes, was like six people there. You were being magnanimous. And, I was, and offering. and offering. And I don't know that I took popcorn after you did. Interesting. Did I? I don't I, think I did. I just remember when I questioned you that it didn't seem to But I was fit. probably, a, I had a, a little bit of a buzz on and I was happy and I had gotten into your show for free. The least I could do was offer popcorn. And okay. you wouldn't say that you weren't going to touch it afterwards because you didn't want to make them I feel wouldn't bad? say, I say you could have popcorn and I, I probably had enough by the time I walked uh, in. Ah, okay. okay. Well, that clarity. Okay. That was, now we have clarity. And then you said, would you like to come up on stage? And you were promoting... Like we were angry. So I said, uh, would you like a drink? And you, you had a drink and then maybe you had another drink. Oh, no, I had a lot. <laughs> you know what mangria is? It's like yeah. sangria for men. Yeah. But it's really, I couldn't stop drinking. I'm, I'm sober right now as we, mm -hmm. I don't mean like in this moment, I'm just not drinking. Uh, I'm not drinking right now. But I drank without thought. And maybe I drank a lot because I thought of all your uh, co-stars' hands in my popcorn. Maybe mm -hmm. that's why I imbibed it. But, but I... Uh, no, that's why you stop drinking. Because once you start, you have one too many. One? 
two or three or four too many. It's also One, because two, the three too many. Yeah. But Mangria is a great. T- uh, you know, you're not paying me. No. Mangria is probably one of the best tasting drinks I've ever had. It it's is refreshing. Good. If I had my choice right now, if I was going to not be sober, that is the drink of choice that I would have. Well, you can go to CorollaDrinks.com and find out all Corolla about CorollaDrinks.com. Jeremy, <laughs> we're going to put a big ad up right now. Yeah. We are. So, so um, could you move the ad away from my face? Jeremy, move it away from my face. I want to continue... Okay, it's away. All right. So, but, uh, and then we were on stage. I remember Jay Moore was your guest. Oh, right. Right. I don't think he was thrilled with me. I, I don't know. I have no, uh, Jay, Jay Moore's a tough guy to read. Jay Moore started off as a, kind of an ass wipe in this business. I mean, he had a reputation for kind of being a head case and an asshole. And then he got really sort of philosophical and nice later on in life and now there's like a, a new version there's you know jay know moore 2.0 but i don't know that he wasn't nice it's just that he was your guest you had sold tickets saying you know it's the adam carolla uh, podcast with jay moore special guest and here i was just offering free popcorn drunk out of my mind <laughs> on stage you may have and stolen crushing. a little of his thunder <laughs> there was no thunder i was just <laughs> screaming and yelling and i remember that because i know it was the canyon club i'll tell you why because at, at some point, my wife had signaled, get off the stage, you must leave. And I don't know how she got it, but it's not a big, it's kind of like a strip mall kind of place, right? The the, the theater's in a, in a strip mall. Yes. She summoned security to get a, um, uh, um, what's it called? A golf cart uh-huh. to get me from the front door to the car. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so that's, I, that's how I knew that I was in trouble. <laughs> but still, it was a, a, an amazing experience. A night. To almost remember. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. So this book now, we, we'll get back. We, that was a, a long way around. Mm-hmm. What What is, uh, to give somebody an example, what was a question or something that somebody ranted on? And what, what is tickling your uh, your mind right now that is going on? And Or do, you, do we just bring, like... I, I just sort of sit back and observe things. Like my first book, which is about 13 years old now is called in 50 years we'll all be chicks and so i had some sort of notion that as a society we were changing and we we're heading some direction we'll all be chicks well we'll go down this more feminine path it's right and that's the pronoun that you came up with 50 I, years ago you were so ahead of yourself 13 years ago but <laughs> how do you yeah. identify as a chick as a chick <laughs> that was uh that was just something i felt was happening or I felt uh, we're heading as a as a nation. So I just sort of sit back and I just sort of observe and then I have thoughts and usually my thoughts may be prescient or maybe a little bit before other people's thoughts. That's my that's Have you my ever role. in these rants, because I know that you are, uh, you can be controversial, mm-hmm. sometimes controversial, but w- uh, that's what I kind of love about you because it's not controversial for the, I find some people who are controversial are controversial for the sake of being controversial. Yes. I, I think that you have an authenticity that a lot of people have. You truly believe in what you're saying and you're not doing it to get the, to make the noise. This is what you truly yes. believe. I always, it always bothers me when you say, or I say something and then it's perceived as controversial and then they say, oh, you're just trying to cause controversy to get more clicks or more sales or more downloads or more whatever. I, I never say anything that I think is going to be controversial sort of in advance and nothing's ever pre-planned. I just give, I give my answers. People ask me questions. I give an answer. They ask me to speak on a subject and I tell them what I think, but I never think about. But do you not find that from when you started till now that, that uh, you're in much more dangerous or do you have any fear of the ground that we are on right now in as far as I don't none. Oh, well, it's, it, I, it's not my job. It's, it's neither here nor there. Have you lost a sponsor? Yeah, you lose lots of stuff if you're just going to say whatever you want to say whenever you want to say it. I mean, it's not so you much... You fear of getting hit. It's not... No. I used to be a boxing coach. I, I, don't, I don't have <laughs> a fear. I don't have fear. It's not so much that I feel like I can beat people up. I just don't have a fear of being punched because if you've done a lot of boxing, you just you lose that 
fear of, of, of being but punched. Dave it wasn't about a punch a guy uh, stormed the stage with what could have been a knife. all Central Valley football player from North Hollywood High I, I don't have a fear of being tackled or punched or anything I, I don't even if a guy it. has a gun knife thing. yes I it's not something I look forward to or, or relish I just don't have a fear of it I I, I don't think about any of that but going into this business you know to be an entertainer as it were you know that wasn't even in the periphery of anything that we had to even concern ourselves with i loved going into uh, comedy because that was the freest space to be the idiot that i was you know had yeah been. well I, I my feeling is is i have to say what i want to say at all times that's the job so I, I never think anything about it. Now, as far as repercussions, it's not so much about sponsorships per se. Like people go, oh, your sponsors are going to drop out. There's more, especially in Hollywood, sort of a general sort of a blackballing. So, for instance, if you want to talk about, let's say, the most progressive kind of wokest of the woke group, it's not really Hollywood. It's kind of Hollywood, but it's places like Sundance Film Festival, Tribeca Film Festival. This is the top of the sort of tip of the spear of the wokest and most progressive groups on the planet, like the Sundance Film Festival. I make documentaries. None of my documentaries will ever be permitted to get into the Sundance Film Festival because they don't like me and the things I say. So that's an instance of probably losing business and commerce for things I say, because if you make documentaries, you want to get them into the Sundance Film Festival, and then you want people to have a bidding war and pay you a bunch of cash to own your documentary. And I've made a lot of good documentaries that could have easily done that, but we will not get into, or we will never get into the Sundance Film Festival because they don't like who I am and they don't like the things I say. Now, they're hypocrite pussies, obviously, who are practicing McCarthyism and they never stop complaining about McCarthyism, but they're snobs and we essentially figure out a way around it, but it would be nice to get a documentary into the Sundance Film Festival. So that's you the think kind of it's, form of punishment. And you think it's directly related to your uh, thoughts and things you've voiced and... Do you know that or do you think it? Yes. Well, I have I have been told by an insider there that they don't like me, for instance. And at a certain point you go, well, where's your documented proof? And essentially, I did a documentary on Paul Newman. Right. And And so at a certain point, there is no alchemy or there's no there, there's there's no way to to divine it perfectly at a certain point you go let's take a look at my docs and see what their rotten tomato scores are they're in the 90s and then let's take a look at the average one that gets into sundance and mine are much higher so you could kind of go well maybe the it seems like the product is is there but we made one on paul newman's racing career uh Sundance is called Sundance because of Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. That's right. Robert Redford's thing. Robert Redford and Paul Newman were great friends. This was a documentary that... Celebrating his great friend. Yes, that later on was on Netflix and, to, to you know, won some, you know, got some really nice notices and stuff. So I also made one called Uppity, which is the first black driver at Indy. Uh, story Willie T. Ribs, which also would have been right in their lane, like a real civil rights kind of thing, groundbreaking kind of Jackie Robinson of race car driving and everything. W much celebrated on everyone's top 10 doc list, never made it in. So you could kind of surmise that they Do you think it's one thought, one thing you said, or just no, in general? No, I, I, think, I think it's an accumulation of, of things. I, I don't know that it's things. It's just... I disagree with them. If you disagree with their orthodoxy, then you get into trouble. I mean, look at COVID. I've disagreed with most of the COVID shit. I was right about all of it, but you were you right get into about trouble. all of it. Yeah. What were you right about that everybody said? I said it. I said this affects this affects the elderly and it affects sick people. 
but it doesn't really do anything to kids or young people, which it doesn't. I've complained against. But about isn't the mask. there? Are there young people and kids that have gotten incredibly yeah. ill from it? Yeah, but so. that doesn't mean we need to shut society down. It's not. So you were against just kids. the totally the, the shutdown, shutting down schools, for instance. I was against. It doesn't really affect kids, right? So now the the argument of like, well, hasn't it affected some kids? Yeah, I'm, there's 19 year old boys who probably got prostate cancer or something at some point, but doesn't mean we build a protocol around. Okay, I'm gonna have an argument right now. Go. But... She's she's a lot more woke. Than she's <laughs> yeah. she's the woke. No, but even if it doesn't affect kids, I'm not arguing with your thought process, and I think you're right. For the most part, it doesn't affect kids and people who are healthy. Yeah. But if they have a sibling or a parent or a grandparent or whatever at home that they're taking care of, isn't it our responsibility before we have treatment or before we have a vaccine or before any of that when it's brand new and it is affecting people to kind of look out for one another? Yeah, except for this fallacy of like, we live with our elderly grandparents or we live, this isn't Italy from 1941. <laughs> I have elderly parents. I don't live with them. I don't know anyone who lives with their elderly parents or elderly. So did you keep your? But here's what I'm did saying. Did you keep your kids away from did, your parents? They don't even like my grandparents. <laughs> <laughs> that was done and done. That's called a tacit. That's so called you were trying to get them over. You were trying to push them over there. <laughs> no, what I'm saying is, is these are these scenarios uh -huh. where okay, it doesn't affect the kids, but what if the kid gets infected and then they visit Nana or Pappy and then they get them? That's all a possibility, but mm -hmm. you can't build a protocol around this possibility. Like you, that's not a reason to shut schools down. See, That's I'm, a reason for you to go, you can't visit your grandparents or you have to making sense. do it with a mask or from the different different side of the living room. Yeah. I mean, my fear has always been, you know, passing it on or giving it to my dad or my mom or going and visiting my grandparents in Canada. That's always been my fear. So I wasn't like, allowed to see her or the kids for a that year. That was the plan. The plan was to scare the shit out of everybody. Yeah. I mean, I'm always scared. Anyways, so. your wife is your wife on the same page as you? <laughs> sort of, kind of, maybe. Is that nobody, a no? Would, nobody was on the same page as me. You I, live in I California. Was like, yeah, I was like, <laughs> they tried to shut down the horse trails around my house. They were shutting down the beaches. I was like, fuck this, immediately, really? and immediately. So if you're well, so here's how I knew what was mm -hmm. going on. They weren't giving the ages of people who died. That was the big problem. That's what caught me originally. They weren't telling us how old the people who died were. They were just saying a man and Arlita died of, of COVID. But they well, we did know, we, but we all knew that the, the majority of deaths were overweight, unhealthy, elderly people. That's well, not a secret. But the majority no. of Americans have underlying health issues. It was the secret. Here's what they did in, in my estimation, although... The statistics bore this out or bear this out. They they wouldn't initially tell us it was basically people in nursing homes that were dying. They didn't initially do that. Isn't they that what, but I, I beg to differ. Isn't that initially what they were doing? Because I, I remember the nursing homes, the first time we heard of it starting was, wasn't it in Seattle that like all these people were all dying? The nursing and home, yeah. It was the nursing homes. Yeah, people were dying in nursing homes for sure. They, they died in, you know, vastly higher percentages in nursing homes because they're elderly and they were compromised. But they didn't really say this is what's happening. So... They were simultaneously saying people are dying in nursing homes and shutting schools. My thing is, is if people are dying in nursing homes, you don't need to shut schools. They never needed to shut schools. I think it was the unknown at the beginning, right? Yeah, at like the beginning, but they carried that into the, like a year and a half into it. That's that's, that's my it. argument. I think they were un they were unduly scaring the population. They never really made a separation like that. The notion that like. Well, it disproportionately affects the elderly. It's not even disproportionate. It's it's minuscule what it does to young people. Like they should have really hammered that home. Like, hey, if you're healthy and you're under 30, this thing's not going to touch you. It's just not going to affect you like it would affect an elderly person. And they never drove that home. Is that true, though? 
Are, are there not some healthy young people that have been... It statistically doesn't exist, like deaths for young people. See, we don't, we still don't really know this. It's no, not I don't. Something, I know of one. It's not something they're pushing out But do you there. know that they were healthy? I do know they were healthy. Well... I know the family. Yeah, it's one person. Yeah, we right. can't yeah. construct a society around one person. And that's, did, that's my argument. That's why everyone And did you get in me. trouble for this argument? Well, yeah, I told, I, I said, I said, I can do whatever I want. I'm deathly scared of flying, and I don't know anyone who's died in a plane. Yeah, well, that's, that's <laughs> but that's it. You're making his point. I know. I'm just saying. You, you're saying that you can't. Anyone can be scared of anything. No, but and there's but, more yeah. reason. But his I point, think there's more reason to be scared of an unknown illness that's affecting a nation. And there were a lot of deaths, proven deaths, not with young people who are healthy. Okay. But but we did Go have look a million. It up. Go, you got a computer. But why do we have a million deaths? Over a million deaths. So we have a lot of old fat people. That we do. Well, look, but the, okay, but you then don't computer. you have to take care of the rest of the U.S.? The U.S. I, that, as a majority. You don't have to shut a school system down to take care of overweight elderly people. So you're no. only. No, but he's making sense. Okay. Well, go. All right. No, go. No, don't fight no, him. Fight no him. I'm not going to fight. Go We're ahead. on opposing ends of the spectrum here, and it's fine. And I really believe that point. everyone is in touch. My point was that I agree with you now. We, pro we should not have closed schools for as long as we did. Yes. But I... Thing. He wasn't against closing schools at the beginning, right? It's just yes, you were. Much. Yes, yeah. he was. Right away, never for a moment. Oh well, I would have closed them for two weeks or something, but right. no, eventually. But it took quickly. us almost a year to get any kind of grasp on handling the situation, or getting a vaccine, or getting we, a we, treatment. No, I'm saying the powers that be had a grasp on this earlier than we did, and they did not inform us of this. That's that might saying. be so, but the people locally who had to make decisions who maybe didn't have the information that you're saying the powers that be had that didn't pass it along had to do with what they had to do with the information they had well look there's two disneylands there's one in florida there's one in california the yeah. one in california was closed the whole time the one in florida was open most of the time mm -hmm. they could have figured it out if the one in florida is doing okay maybe we could open the one in california but we wouldn't do it in california we wouldn't open schools. This schools is not my podcast, Dad. Go place. for it. I'm just going. To, I. I'm but I'm interested. Disagree. I'm interested in the <laughs> in the two sides of this. I don't want to That's argue. A, I didn't want to come on here and argue with a guest. You're not arguing. We're not really arguing. Okay. You're not, <laughs> and you're respectfully. You're respectfully. Sharing. I respect everyone's opinion. I really do. I just have a different opinion. Well, that's fine. But yeah. if your opinion is close the beach down, and my opinion is I want to go to the fucking beach, then I should go to the beach. That's I agree all I'm with saying. you. I agree but with you. But he wasn't allowed now. to. But I wasn't allowed to go to the beach. That's because at the what beginning, we didn't back. know. They, I, they never, and look, you're not an epidemiologist if you can't fucking figure out that going to the beach is not a bad place to go with a virus. That's insane. But I'm not an epidemiologist, no, and I was just people, going based on what I did know. You listen to people that uh -huh. shut the beaches down. I didn't listen to them. I right. knew they were wrong, and they were wrong. So in your own house, your wife must have been afraid for your own children. Your children's school No, we have healthy kids. It doesn't affect kids. I mean, she... But did, she was okay with leaving them home, or she wanted them to go back to school? Eh, it was like, eh, we'll do whatever they... They tell us to do. They're not great students, so we were missing. <laughs> they hate, they hate they missing anything. A, a lot, but it, it screwed up a lot of kids. I'll, I'll I believe you. That I think it did, and I think that hindsight is twenty twenty. But you're saying I you agree. Hindsight is twenty twenty. But they knew a lot of this stuff earlier than. But the problem is that we, we all can't get on the same page. And the reason is that we don't all have, and I think it's algorithms, we don't all have the same, we have the same source, sources for information, but it isn't funneled that way because of social media. If you look at social media now, you get the information that you have clicked on, that you have enjoyed, and you're getting different information than I'm getting. Well, what I did during the whole pandemic is I watched social media and then I watched who they pulled off of social media. And the people they pulled off of social media were many doctors, many guys with some pretty rich pedigrees from Stanford and Harvard and all that kind of stuff. And they were pulling these guys off for disinformation. And I kept watching the pattern. Like, why is everyone who disagrees 
with the status quo, even though these are people with decades of experience in the field? Why are they all being pulled off? For but are they really being pulled off? Yeah. You know, uh, not to t- take a side. Well, they but were, you, yeah. But but even on public uh, television, you know, like the the, uh, the difference between Fox and CNN, they, they were both there for the taking. Nobody shut any one of them down. One of them's got to be wrong, <laughs> right? Yeah, no, well, you can't shut down Fox, but you can shut down, you know, there's a, Doc, uh, sorry, there's a journalist named Alex Berenson, and he write he used to write for the New York Times and stuff, and he started writing a bunch of stories about it, and he was pulled off of Twitter, but he was right about everything and turned out to be right about everything. Is he back so on Twitter? Twitter? No, he's suing Twitter, and I don't know if he's back on Twitter, but the point is, is most of the people that had opposing viewpoints were removed from Twitter, or many were, and I found that curious. I'm like, why are they taking down guys who dis? You know, so they say, lock it down. One group of doctors says, shut schools. The other group of doctors says, this is a mistake. We shouldn't be locking things down. And the ones who say it's a mistake were the ones who were deplatformed. And I found that curious. I was like, why are they... Why isn't it just an open forum where everyone can have their opinions, especially since they're both experts? So it became apparent to me that there was a pattern that was forming. And that pattern was there was a kind of an orthodoxy, like mask up everywhere. And if you said masks aren't effective, then you got into trouble and pulled down. And so I started focusing on who was being pulled down and why they're being pulled down. I'm not talking about like fringe weird, you know, tinfoil hat guys. I'm talking about doctors and epidemiologists who are sharing their opinions. And that's when I started to see that something was going on. You didn't believe in a mask? No. Why? Well, I flew a lot during the pandemic. Right. And Did you ever get COVID? I don't think so. But I'm not. He didn't get tested. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> maybe. The answer is maybe. I've been tested. Oh. You know, yeah, I, have you had syphilis? We can talk after that. Okay. <laughs> okay, you flew a lot. Uh, I, I flew a lot. And the second they said, you know, the second I flew the first time and they handed me the Mediterranean hummus box for, for lunch, and they said, you can take the mask off and eat, and then you got to put the mask back on when you're done eating, or you, here's your drink. You can take the mask on take the mask off in between sips and then you got to pull the mask up after each sip. I was like, Oh, this doesn't do anything. This is total bullshit. doesn't make any sense. There's no app. You either wear a mask or you don't wear a mask. (laughs) Yes. And plus half the people I saw wearing the mask had the strap twisted. Yeah. And when you twist the strap that goes around your ear, it leaves about a seven eighths gap. It like bunches up and leaves this big air gap. So you can Mm -hmm. literally see the person's cheek through their thing. And I'm like, this is an airborne virus. This is, this is, this isn't doing anything. You don't think that's a, it's a little bit of a deterrent for that airborne virus. I mean, it it, it makes, it, it makes sense that it's a little bit of a deterrent. But I don't think the statistics really bear that out. But even if it even if it is, I ever so I see I also started talking to people like Bean of Kevin and Bean, right? right? And he said, I did everything right. I did everything right and I got COVID. I wore masks, I washed everything down. You know, Bean's kinda in your camp, you know what I mean? Right. He's he he's, he's a hand washer. He said, I did <laughs> everything right. And, and I got this, I got this thing. And I started talking to a lot of people and went, I did everything they told me to do and I got COVID. And then I was like, I've done nothing they've told me to do and I haven't gotten COVID. And then my friend who I travel with, Mike August, he's done nothing either and he didn't get COVID. So it, it became apparent to me very early that you were going to get it or you weren't going to get it. Right. Or you probably were going to get it. And your best defense is exercise and sunshine and a good diet. And then you probably would get it. And so with that in mind, I was like, I'm just going to throw caution in the wind. I'm going to travel. I'm not washing my hands and I'm going to take care of business. And then if I get it, I'll get it. 
but I didn't see any logical way to prevent me from getting it since everyone who did all the logical stuff, didn't. it didn't seem to prevent them from getting it. My problem with that train of thought is you, you're like, oh, I'll just throw caution to the wind and get it, which is great for you because you are healthy and mm-hmm. relatively young and you could fight it like you're saying and it's no big deal. It might just be like the cold or a flu or nothing at all. But then you're traveling around and seeing all these other people that are susceptible to maybe more harmful effects of it. Well, then they need to stay home. Oh, you're for the you're the, in the camp of like if you're older you stay home. Well, if you're susceptible or what how however you describe it. If you're a person that is old or has pre-existing conditions or something, then you need to take care of that. Okay. Well, what? That, stop staring at me, do. dad. <laughs> stop. Well, if okay. You do, if you're in danger, yeah. I mean, if if you're in that group, then you need to act accordingly. Yeah. I wouldn't fly commercially. Perhaps, I just feel like we need to like all help each other. You know, you're talking to yeah, a but man all... that's willing to piss in a sink. No, I know, I know. What? What? All helping I'm each other. I'm a hand washer. I'm a hand washer. I'm <laughs> not, but but the apple didn't fall far from the sink. <laughs> if you, but if you say all help each other, I, I no one's going to disagree with all help each other. But shut down tons of businesses and schools and society, then that's not all helping each other. I agree so with that. A lot of damage was done. Yeah, I agree with that. I'm not arguing with. Well, like I have elderly parents. I wouldn't. But you hate them. I, I, well, I'm not a fan, but it's a two way street. <laughs> they should stay at home. See, it's for different. Sure. For, it was more important to me to be able to see my parents and hang out with my parents and my kids see my parents than me go and possibly get it. But I don't see, we're working under the supposition that you can not get it. I don't know that you cannot get it. I know. Well, you cannot get it if you. Uh, all everyone, kidding. everyone has got it. I mean, no, but you could not get it by locking yourself away, not going to wait, school, not going knock out. Knock on wood. But I don't even I know if you cannot it. get it Shh. that way. Okay. I mean, honestly. Well, the truth of the matter is, your son got it, and I he, did not. It, yeah, and, you did and not. he barfed in my face. Wow. Yeah, he yeah. literally barfed in my face. Oh. like, like all over. Yeah. Some guys are into that. Yeah. I don't want to have <laughs> to turn for the German here. No, I, well, I, I'm, I'm just saying my feeling was is I can't control this, so I'm going about You know what life. I love? I love that we can have a civil, um, intelligent conversation. Yes. And, and that's what was missing throughout this whole thing. There is such vitriol and such tribal and uh, um, I don't, you know, I think, you know, I'm, I'm from Canada and I came to America because, you know, there was, a, well, I'm a capitalist, you know, and, and there was freedom to do things I probably couldn't do in Canada to make money. And I love that this was, uh, th- this democracy is based on a, a two party, at least two party system where I think it's healthy to disagree. And I think it's healthy to, but we've lost, um, we, we still disagree, you know, but we've lost that respect. And you just talked about it. Like even people with opposing views are shut down, turned off, banished, which is not healthy because I I want, I want to hear, I want to hear the other side. I want to hear. And then as a person, and that's even in the, that's, we've lost that in, I don't think there's news anymore. I think news is opinion. Mm-hmm. You know, and I used to love Walter Cronkite because mm-hmm. he would tell me the facts mm-hmm. and then I can make an opinion based my own personal opinion based on this set of facts that doesn't even exist anymore. I don't well, think you didn't you didn't question it back then. You question you know, everything now. Yes. If there was a it was funny. I said to uh, a lot of the guys I work with a lot of younger guys and I said to him not too long ago, I said, if you heard a story on CNN five or eight years ago, what would your opinion be? And they went, just, that's the story. Like, that's the fact. And, right. Or something pertaining, to, let's say, to COVID or some right. version of that. You know. And I said, what if you heard that today? They said, I'd have to look into it. They all went, I'd have to go find out if there was I work with a, l- a lot of young more. people that have really diverse opinions <laughs> <laughs> that I don't know how to argue. But I respect that that's their opinion. Jeremy's yeah. smiling. I, I can, you know, my thing is... Can I say it, Jeremy? 
I won't if you want me, if you... He could say it himself well, if he wants to. Jeremy, sorry, what did you ask? I asked, can I talk about like one of your opinions? I'd like to hear his oh, take yeah. on it. Yeah, do it. Yeah. Jeremy's a flat earther. Uh huh. <laughs> I, 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 you know, it's interesting about flat earthers. Mm -hmm. I work with Dr. Drew, obviously, I'm fr very good friends with Dr. Drew, and I think flat earthers drive him nuts. They drive me, they piss him off. Why? They drive him nuts. Okay. I love this guy. And, he doesn't and, drive me nuts. And there's there's a there's a few of those people out there. Um, I'm not bothered by flat earth. I'm not bothered. I love this guy. He's probably one of the most talented, I, smartest people I know. Yet he doesn't believe in the globe. <laughs> well, I would, you know, I would ask that it will I, help me understand why, Jeremy. <sighs> We we should have a dedicated episode to this. No, I just want <laughs> to give a couple of There is someone that you listen to specifically that has a podcast or something, right? That talks about it and all the reasons he gives for. I just want to hear Adam's take on what you think. So just tell him what you think, and then we, we can have ten episodes on flat Earth. <laughs> uh yeah. Uh, shit, I don't know. I just uh, <laughs> I've always been. Um, you know, I grew up the same way as everyone. Like I knew. You know, I took science classes and all that stuff. I just, when that idea got presented, I never thought about it before. And then when I tried to think about it, it was just, I don't know. I think it's interesting. Well, okay. Let me, let me just chime in here. Jeremy, right? Yes. Jeremy. So here's the question with a lot of, a lot of stuff. Cause I've noticed this, what we would call conspiracy theorists. If you look at a lot of conspiracy theorists, it's not the actual, subject flat earth or there weren't any jews in either one of the twin towers that came down or you know these kind there of weren't i didn't i've never heard that i never one. heard that you never is heard that why that they, they no no uh, look um there are many theories mm -hmm. about like no jews being in that building on on 9 11 ed asner the late great ed asner thinks those two buildings were taken down by the u.s government wow absolutely and there, there's many people who think Jeremy, that. you don't do you think that? Yeah, I do. Oh, so I didn't know those were did, just synonymous. Jeremy, those. you're making you're making my point. <laughs> which is, what is the earth being flat have to do with no Jews in either one of the towers on 9-11 and our own federal government being responsible for wiring those buildings to take them down to the ground? Those are two different subjects. Right. Right. But is I found, and I found with Ed Asner when I interviewed him as well, the commonality between the conspiracy theorists is a sort of distrust and a hate, hatred for our government. It's not so much, I think the earth is flat, it's I don't believe our fucking government. And when they tell us something, I reject it. So that's where the Twin Towers and the flat earth have an intersection. But I didn't. That's look. like never going to. You don't believe we went to space either, right? I'm assuming. I think you he never. Does. No. Uh, no. The moon landing. Yeah. No. Never. Never. Got to get on board. So that. it's an overall, it's suspicion, and probably a dislike for our government versus I think. But aren't some of these things, like the 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 globe is not a government. That like I don't know that the I don't think. The world is round because of government. Well, an, an orthodoxy. Well, first off, the government sent people to outer space. The government faked the moon landing. The government built the satellites and sent them up so we could photograph the Earth from space so that you could see it was round. There's a there's a oh, connection, there's a connection. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, <laughs> but but Jeremy right hates the government or mistrusts his government. He hates the government and his stepdad. Those are the two, <laughs> <laughs> those are the through lines. But you, here's the thing, because most people would think that these are obvious, simple constructs. Yet now that I know Jeremy, he's probably, he's, he's incredibly bright. He's incredibly talented. He is, so the, the, the two things, like, it sounds silly. Some of these thoughts sound Whoa. silly, but, but from a bright person, Where's Jeremy on vaccines, on COVID vaccines? Oh, where do you oh. think? Where do you think? I know where he's at. <laughs> <laughs> but you want to know? But I, I offered him $50,000 cash. He said no. 
I gave him 60 not to do it. So just, he's a good businessman. He's a hell of a... No, but Howie. Yeah. What I was saying is sort of pattern. So mm -hmm. going back to the beginning of this conversation when we were studying COVID and I was mm -hmm. like, I see where these patterns are going. I just sussed out Jeremy for you, did you, I not? You, absolutely. That's right. amazing. Right. Like he said psychic. he's a flat earther. I knew where he was on vaccines and the Twin Towers, right? And space. Right. So there's patterns to people, and that's what you're you're seeing. But, how, but he probably thinks the same thing of us. Yeah, I'm sure I'm sure he does. But what I'm what I'm saying is is things don't really exist in a vacuum, even if you're in outer space where no one can hear you scream. <laughs> Evidently. <laughs> I, I'm just saying it. people get obsessed with, you really think the earth is flat? It's not, You really think those twin towers were wired by the government and just, you know, blown up like a casino in Vegas that it out, you know, lived right. its use or whatever. And it's like, it's not so much that. It's a general gestalt of I don't trust government information and what, what is a what would be a norm what would be convention so everyone is saying get the vaccine get back to normal jeremy is saying not so fast i don't trust general convention and then so this would then be a universal thing that would be applied to all facets of life so flat earth vaccine twin towers all very different subjects but, but it's from all, the same source it's all coming through the same prism and being processed the same way. So that's how you know where Jeremy is. I think most people are pretty predictable though. Like if you know something about them or their stance on something, you could pretty much predict their stance on going forward on a lot of things. Nowadays, yes, yeah. for sure, yes. There used wow. to be probably more nuance. We didn't offend you, did we, Jeremy? No, not at all. Okay, that's okay. And you're gonna keep it in, right? Yeah, it's he's awesome. A, he, he's, the, awesome. he's the editor. <laughs> <laughs> he's got more power. Than oh, when you said keep it in, I thought you meant his blind rage. Oh. Uh, because there will be an incident. I just hope I'm not here. No, I don't think he... I've never seen Jeremy even get angry at him. No, right. Does like Jeremy get angry? Even that's, what the neighbors, that's what the neighbors always say. You know, oh, really? He was a quiet guy. Nice himself. Guy. <laughs> they found all those kids underneath the floorboard. <laughs> Jeremy... <laughs> wow, that's pretty interesting. It really, you are incredibly fascinating. You really fascinate me. No, 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 because you uh, are probably, you're very, I, I don't know what the word, I don't know how to describe you, but you're incredibly intelligent, funny. You, you run the gambit from like silly to very, you, you make a lot of sense. You make statements, you know, that, could be considered controversial, but still it's incredibly interesting. And even some of the stuff that I'm totally on the other side about, I like listening to your opinion and I like hearing why. I always want to understand why and how. And there's a lot of people out there that are just, you know, that's not right, this is the way it is. And I'll go, w w why? And you can't even, just, you're wrong. And you're very, um, open about and 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 it's you make it really easy to understand and you you're sometimes incredibly convincing well I, look <laughs> you're gonna you know you, you have to sort of be piecemeal about things like you can't i think the problem is is you go oh we'll just circle back to covid one more time so you go um all right so one side is saying do this and the other side is saying like don't do this or whatever and then if you just get caught up in one side or the other then you're going to be wrong about a bunch of stuff because you picked a team and you've essentially with the team like you know whatever the whatever the team is they're not going to be right about all all the things so you can go well uh vaccines good get vaccinated and then you can go uh uh did you shut, get did you get vaccinated i got one shot it's a long story i didn't get the second did your family <laughs> uh yes they the got they story. got they got vac they got vaccinated um but but what i'm saying is so i went like all right get a vaccine mainly just because you're pressured into it because you couldn't 
you know, attend functions and things like that. But but fine. And, uh, you know, don't go to a rave. Okay, okay, fine. And then they went, but we're shutting down the beaches. And I went, fuck that. So right. I, I agree with you on this and that. And then you want to shut down beaches. And I don't agree with you. So you can go, well, you're on this side or you're on that side. And it's like, no, I'm going to do it piecemeal. I'm just going to pick and choose the stuff I think is right. And, and sometimes it'll be on this side and sometimes it'll be on that side. But at least you'll know where That's I the stand. way it's supposed to be. That's the way That's it's supposed to be. And then do you just right. get ridiculed from both sides because you're piecemealing? He doesn't give a shit. You don't care. <laughs> I, look, I, I've, I've, I've sat at, at, at tables at, at brunch in it with, with, I'll give you an example. I'll give you a perfect example. The fact when, that it's when, brunch, we know what side it is. Well, we went to Maui. <laughs> yes, we did. We were, we were in Maui. And you yeah. graciously invited us on your rented catamaran, which is lovely and very Anytime. gracious. And and we were. I was sitting at a table, and I'm sitting with all my progressive friends, and we're all going out to Maui and having a good time. And for some reason, the subject of leaf blowers came up. And, and oh, they're, they're so loud and it makes a mess. I hate breathing it in or whatever. And I said, yeah, everyone hated it. They were walking their dog and the guy's blowing the leaf blower out in the street and everything. And I said, you know, it, it's they've had an ordinance against it in L.A. for since like 1996. It's it's illegal, essentially. And they go, how come it's not enforced? These guys are blowing. I, it wakes me up in the morning, blah, blah, blah. And I said, well, the majority of the people with leaf blowers are poor Mexicans, essentially. Those are the gardeners. And it's kind of a bad look, bad optics to take these poor people and arrest them or give them summonses or whatever. And we have a progressive government here and they're just not going to enforce this thing. But it's it's on the books. And everyone got angry at me. They were like, that's racist and come on. And that's not what's going on. And I said, it is what's going on. I've read articles on it. I understand it. And I had about 11 people at the table all turn against me. And these are, these are wives and friends and children. <laughs> I know who they are. <laughs> they're all of them, right? And they're all looking at me going, what kind of racist shit is this? And I go, fuck you. I, I'm just telling you what it is. And I ruined the brunch and I, I turned everyone against me. But my feeling was like, I happen to know what's going on. You don't. Right. I know it's 11 <laughs> against one, but I'm not going to join your side that doesn't know what's going on just because I'm outnumbered. So what did your wife say to you after the brunch? It, it's a, Well, everyone knows who I am. So they th then I get written off. It's like, ah, okay, he doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. And I'm always like, just go look it up. There's a big LA Times article I read from 1999. It's on, it's on the internet. It is, well, if it's on the internet, it's it real. is. Well, the LA Times article is right. on the internet. You right. can go look it up. I mean, that's what's going on. I okay, you don't like the way that sounds. That's your problem. I'm just, I'm just a convey. I'm just a conduit for what is is happening. Or give me another opinion that would explain this thing being illegal, but folks with the leaf blowers being ubiquitous on any any given weekday in suburbia here and no one could offer anything. So I'm perfectly fine with so you not being popular. You no, you don't win. Later on, I explain why I hated the Beastie Boys and then turn the table against me even even to a sharper decree. But I'm I'm fine. <laughs> it's 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 not a popularity contest is what is I'm Is it saying. because they're Jews? The table? No, Beastie Boys. <laughs> oh, the Beastie Boys. <laughs> That's right. And you know how many Beastie Boys were in those towers on 9-11? None. None. Wow. That's, That's the circle of life. It all came That's around, yeah. It is. I got to tell you something, Adam. We have, we do have a lot of uh, difference of opinions, but I love your opinion. I think you're one of the smartest, funniest, uh, good human beings there is. I think you're a good husband, father, friend, um, just, I'd invite you to brunch anytime. I don't serve brunch. I don't think I've been to a, have I been to a brunch? I don't, probably. I think brunch is just late <laughs> breakfast, right? It's just like I slept in. I don't think I've, I, I don't think I've ever said, I'm 66 years old, I, I have ever said to somebody, 
we're having brunch. Would you like to join you us? You live in a white suburban neighborhood. I guarantee you've been to brunch. You well, without knowing. Know. Yeah, you without even knowing late. it. Yeah. <laughs> you thought it was late breakfast. They have the bottomless popcorn box. Yeah. I do. Yeah. <laughs> the book is... Wait, every... I do want to ask you something oh. before we go. I want... Because I did listen one time to you. I know this is like She totally... listened once to you. No. <laughs> I know that this has nothing to do with what we were talking about, but I did listen to an interview you did one time with Howard Stern where he was on you about doing this podcast and this is before everyone was doing a podcast and he was saying like what are you doing why aren't you doing radio like podcast is not going to be the new normal have you ever talked to him since just uh, or not, called him and yes. gone nah, no, nah, 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 I, nah. Yeah. <laughs> I, no I he made it very clear that podcasting was amateur hour and it would never be a business and there were no professionals in it and no one would ever get paid and uh, he, here's my feeling about Howard in that. Mm -hmm. I think he understands he was probably wrong or off the mark on it. He does not need me to inform him of that. <laughs> he can simply close his eyes and hear in the zeitgeist all the millions of dollars and all the movers and shakers and all the notable names that are doing so much in that field of podcasting. And so... He understands probably more than anybody that he was off the mark on that. On the other hand, I don't care if that's his opinion or was his opinion. I, I don't feel a need to correct him. He has been corrected because society corrected him. He doesn't need me to inform him. Oh, of that. You, you and I are so different in so many ways. I would have. I would. But you know what? But you know what the overall <laughs> message is here. What? You got to serve yourself. You really do. He is somebody who doesn't isn't doing it for others i and didn't other care when he told me at the time when he told me it was a joke that's amazing nobody cares nobody's gonna listen what this is not a business i i was like okay well that, that's that's your opinion i find you fascinating i love you i love what you do um i'll, I'll say yes to anything you ever ask I me love to that about you um um the book is everything reminds me of something yes the podcast is your name sake that's right adam carolla and it's great and i've done it many times um what else are we selling are mangria. you touring mangria yeah. <laughs> oh my god from a guy who doesn't drink if i decide to not be sober that would be the first drink i would have and probably the last drink you, i would have you can go to adamcroll.com live dates shows around the country books whatever family All good that. everybody good everything's good all right my best to you thank you so much for showing up Thanks, and thank guys. you for this warehouse idea <laughs> really welcome. working out and that's it